going to need a bobbin. In this bag is all the um, accessories for this machine. There's different feet in here, and there's also plenty and plenty of bobbins. Now, I don't think any of these bobbins, it may fit our other singer, but most of them will fit only this machine. So we'd like to keep this bag near this machine. Okay, so anyway, the bobbin goes on here, and the whole bobbin mechanism is on this side. Okay, to wind a bobbin, it's right here in the manual on page eight, and it actually gives you a diagram of the machine. So that's what this is for. And the thread comes from the front. So always look at where, which direction your thread is coming from. Sometimes that helps a lot. And like on all machines, there's this little circular knob, and that always is for bobbin winding. So we're gonna thread that in there and right up to the bobbin. And what I do is just take a long piece and wind it around for a few times, okay? Now, you have to unlock the wheel. So this is loose, okay? Old machines. The new machines, you don't need to do that. And very loose. And then you press this down right into the bobbin. And, and I want to hold the tie, the, the end, until it gets going. There it goes. So usually you just have to wait for the machine to, it does its own thing. But if you find that it's um, guiding too much to one way, you can also do it on your own. And then first we're gonna put in our bobbin. And when you're putting in a bobbin in any of the machines, it's over the top, the thread is over the top and facing you. Then you drop it in and then you pull it over to the niche, the first niche. It'll also show you in the manual. And then eventually the thread is going to come right through that knob there, that niche. I always call it niches. Okay, so I'm gonna thread it in white and then we'll switch it to brown. And it's very simple machine. Watch out, this, this light gets really hot. Um, hook. When you're going through a tension on any of the machines, you need to hold your thread down because you need to get into that hook there. And you can't do it unless you give some pressure to the thread. Then you're going to pull up your hook. Now sometimes this hook will have a hook, especially on the newer machines. This one only has a hole, so you have to go through the hole, okay? Then we go down to this hook this hook and this machine I want to explain thoroughly that the when you're putting in the needle because a lot of people have to change needles around here set the needle the flat side goes over on this side which is opposite of all the other machines that's the way they used to do it and you put the flat side this way shove it up as far as you can, and then tighten as tight as you can with your fingers. You can also use a screwdriver. There is a niche here to use a screwdriver if you need to. Um, I'm wondering if this, there's another hook right here at the, um, underneath this screw, which I didn't see before. So because this needle is the opposite of what the flat side is this way, you have to thread from right to left rather than left to right, which most machines are left to right, or the needle is forward, and then you just go straight through, which is much easier. So as the years went by from 1939, they made it a lot better. So now, now a lot of people think I should put the thread in my mouth. First of all, it's unsanitary, especially when you're working with machines that other people are working on. If it's yours at home, fine, do what you want. But all you have to do is cut a nice sharp cut, and it, the wetting of the, knee, the thread actually swells it, especially if it's got cotton in it. It'll swell, and it makes it harder to thread. 
So now we're in our needle, okay? And we put it behind the foot. And now we're tightened over here after that bob and make sure you're tightened. And then we're going to wheel and bring up our loop. And now we are threaded. So this machine has something a little different, this flat side. So the needle, when you are, it even says the direction on number nine to go that way. So let's make sure we did everything we're supposed to. Um, number one is up here. Number two is going through the tension. Make sure you put some tension on it. And then it'll hook onto this hook, okay? Which is three and four. Five is this one. No hook, you have to go through the hole. And then down here is number six, number seven, number eight, and nine is through the needle. Now, do you have to go through that every time? If you're a good sewer, you cut it up here because we have a brown bobbin. We want to change to brown, okay? The thread should come from the back and um, your knit should be at the uh, it doesn't matter when it's standing up. If this was lying down, that little niche from the manufacturer should be facing the machine so it doesn't get caught, okay? But your thread should always come from the back. Okay, so now we're going to tie a square knot. If you were ever a Girl Scout, it is old, which is white, over new, which is brown. So white over brown and then brown, which is new over old. It's the opposites. It makes a square knot. It's actually a circle, but it's a square knot, and it makes a really tight knot. If you just did a regular knot, it wouldn't work. And then all you have to do is pull, and it should go through everything and the needle, and it did. How wonderful. Sometimes it doesn't, and you have to give it a little tug. And if it doesn't and it breaks, then you thread your needle. But it went right through. Okay, so let's see if this sews. We do just, um, Paul and Milford just fixed it for us, and it should sew wonderfully. Now, this machine also doesn't have your lines um, to, to measure. Um, your 5 8 seam or your half inch seam. So it's always good to have a ruler and a six inch one will fit nicely in the machine because from the center of the needle over, we could also put tape here or lines. We'll, we'll do that in the future for sewers. Okay, so let's see if it sews. Um, another hint when you're sewing is never put the fabric right at the edge of the hole where the needle's going in because you can actually dig the fabric down into the machine. You wanna make sure that hole is covered. Then you start. And over here is our stitch length. And it's very hard to see because it's all black and somebody painted it really nice. Okay, but there's all your stitch lengths, and we're gonna go up a little bit. It was on a basting stitch, which is all the way down the bottom. The more you go up, the tighter it gets, okay? And this knob here also makes it um, where you can keep it stationary, okay? But right now, we're just gonna go uh, in between stitch. And it's sewing very nicely. So that's a small stitch. So let's go to a basting stitch and I'll show you this is the longest stitch that it makes. And you might want to use that for leather. Now, this is an older, heavier machine. And a lot of people at Make Haven like to use these for leather. You want to use like a heavy needle, especially when you're using heavy thread. This is normal thread and I have a normal needle in there, but if you are using heavy thread, you need a heavy needle, which is a 14, 16, or 18, depending on the leather you're sewing. But look at it, so it's beautiful. Thank you, Paul and Milford, he's uh, doing all our sewing machines. Okay, and any questions, just um, have an animator 
and you're going to have a quiz after you saw this video so that you will be badged for this machine.